With the Air and Space Forces Association's 2025 Airspace and Cyber Conference underway, everybody's talking about Lockheed Martin's new fighter drone and Boeing kicking off production on their F-47. But I want to talk about this picture because it shows an F-35 doing something that it has no right to be able to do. And I want to make sure to credit AirPower 2.0 Mill Standard on Twitter for bringing this picture to my attention. You see, this image was released by Lockheed Martin this week as a part of the conference's press materials. And what we're looking at here is an F-35A firing Lockheed's own AGM-183A Aero hypersonic missile from under wing with another of these long-range hypersonic weapons still attached to a pylon on the other wing. Now, the AGM-183 Aero, or Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon, is the world's only hypersonic glide vehicle built to be launched from aircraft rather than from ground-based launchers, with a publicly disclosed range of north of a thousand miles and a top speed that's said to be in excess of Mach 7. Now, hypersonic glide vehicles function a lot like ballistic missiles during their initial stages of flight, with a rocket booster first propelling them to high speeds and high altitudes, though usually lower altitudes than most ballistic missiles. And then the glide vehicle, or warhead, separating from that booster and gliding, unpowered but at extreme speeds, down toward its target, using thrusters, moving control surfaces, or some combination of the two to maneuver somewhat unpredictably along the way, making these weapons exceedingly tough to intercept. Now, this weapon has been in testing in one way or another since 2021 and saw repeated failures early on, largely attributed to systems other than the hypersonic glide vehicle itself, like the missile failing to separate from the launching B-52 or its rocket booster failing to ignite. And these issues, at one point, seemed to lead to the program's cancellation, though it has since seen a resurgence, and as testing progressed, Lockheed seemed to work out all the kinks, with several successes then culminating in at least two long-range all-up-round flight tests in 2024. All-up-round meaning, effectively, the weapon as it would manifest in combat. Now, this is not a little missile. At 22 feet long and 6,600 pounds, the AGM-183 is 10 feet longer and more than 18 times heavier than an AMRAAM, which is part of why we've only seen it test launch to date from the B-52, and why the Air Force's integration plans have the F-15E Strike Eagle slated to get it next. The F-35 is almost 13 feet shorter than the Strike Eagle. So, the very idea of strapping one of these monster missiles to the Joint Strike Fighter already seems almost crazy. But strapping two of them to the F-35 almost seems like flexing for flexing's sake. And to be honest, I'm not even sure it would be possible. Based on promotional materials for the F-35's external pylons, the inboard underwing stations, which are plumbed for external fuel tanks, are rated to carry loads of up to 5,000 pounds, while the midboard pylons are only rated for 2,500 pounds, meaning the pylons we see carrying the hypersonic missiles in this render probably couldn't carry them. Now, that might suggest changes underway for the F-35's mounting stations, or maybe even plans for a shorter-ranged and thus lighter variant of the Aero hypersonic missile. Or, you know, maybe they just made this graphic because they think it's funny to drive nerds like me nuts. Now, the Air Force has already allotted $387.1 million in 2026 to kicking off aero production and getting the world's first air-launched HGV into service. But whether or not they actually have any plans to bolt these weapons up to the F-35 is anyone's guess. Hey guys, me again with one quick saved round. We are now less than 4,000 subscribers away from reaching our goal of crossing a half a million subs by the end of this month. And I really appreciate your help. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider clicking that subscribe button down below. It would mean a ton to me and my team. But either way, thanks for watching.